So I was asked if I was trying to be the next great black leader. Short answer, no. But if stepping into a leadership role is what I have to do to see my people live better, to stop the senseless violence in our communities, to see our families whole, then that's what I'll do, no question. No question at all. But serious question, why would anyone want to be the next great black leader? Black leaders die in vain. There's no incentive in taking on that role. The people who step up and assume leadership roles in our communities don't do it because it's lucrative or rewarding. They do it because they have a love for their people that exceeds their love for a lot of other things. They want to see people doing better. That's it. They're seeing their people struggle and want to see them out of it. It's not on them. It's in them. There are a lot of people who are tired of seeing us in this lowly state that do absolutely nothing. They shut the blinds, close the curtains. They get up, pack and move to a different neighborhood, a different city, a different state, a different country. And who could blame them? Again, I ask, why would anyone want to be the next great black leader? Why would you want to lead a people who are so readily willing to walk away from you and cancel you after you say one thing they don't agree with? Yeah, they can agree with 90% of the stuff that come out your mouth, but they're going to hate you for the other 10%. When they don't agree with your lifestyle, when your marriage isn't working for them, how the fuck is Will and Jada, Papoose and Remy, Shump and Tiana's marriage is failing you? Why are you so invested in their marriage but barely present in your own? Why would you want to lead a people who will speak so loudly and joyfully on your mistakes, on your defeats, but are quiet on your victories? Anything positive about you, they're mum. Why would you want your legacy reduced to that? Black leaders die in vain. It doesn't matter how big or small the plight. When you look at a black leader sans Frederick Douglass, you are looking at a man or woman whose work went completely to waste, was ignored, or simply forgotten by the vast majority of their own people. I'd be willing to bet the majority of our youth don't even know who Frederick Douglass is. We're talking about fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, so on and so forth who instead of focusing on their families, put the greater cause of uplifting their people first, and it was all for naught. What efforts have been put forth to fulfill the wishes of any of them? Marcus, Martin, Malcolm. Malcolm wanted to bring this nation up on charges with the United Nations for their treatment of us. Who followed up with that after his passing? Martin's work is the most recognized today only because it benefits them to keep you nonviolent when dealing with the circumstances that they put you in. They didn't care for Martin back then. As nonviolent as his movements were, he was a thorn in their behinds. That's why they put a bullet in that man and sent the doctor in to finish the job. But they saw an opportunity to keep you docile by making sure you understood the way Martin would approach things. 60 years later, we're still peacefully protesting over dead bodies that were met with anything but peace. To this day, they letting dogs out on us to rip apart our flesh. And y'all gonna grab a sign, sing a chant, march a block, and wait for the next bell to be rung. And as great of a leader as Dr. King was, we still have people that'll turn on the microphone and speak about his infidelities. That man was supposed to have every black woman in this nation throwing themselves at him. They were supposed to find everything that that man displayed attractive. Today, our women claim that the majority of men don't have a home, don't have a car, don't have a job, don't have any money, don't have any life plans. They don't have any of that. But somehow, they still have a woman's legs open. They still have a woman's attention. They still have a woman worried about them and on the internet complaining about them. And when a man comes along with the patience of a grandmother knitting and tries his best to save you from yourselves, you celebrated his death. The audacity. Listen, man, I am unapologetically black. Black meaning African-American, an American descendant of Africa, whatever designation floats your boat, I am that. I make no apologies for the amount of love, care, concern, and desires that I have for my people. But no, I will not make this my life purpose. I am going to continue to mentor the young people I run across, continue to give a helping hand to those who need it, and continue to make content that I feel will help improve the lives of people in our communities. But outside of that, I'm going to continue to love on my wife, continue to spend time with friends and family, spend time in nature, 
fire up that grill and throw some links on it. I'm going to laugh at every joke I find funny. Sing along to every song I like, whether or not I can hit the notes. I'm going to dance no matter how awkward it looks. I'm going to find something to enjoy about every day. That way, when it's all said and done, I have things that I can smile about also. Our communities cannot be saved by one person, but it does not mean one person can't inspire others to improve their lives, conditions, and circumstances.